Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Connected Worker podcast. Today we're going to run you through everything you need to know about the Connected Worker and Connected Worker platforms. And to do that with me, I've got two gentlemen right here. I've got to my left, Lawrence de Koning, President Sales at For Industry and Mathieu Gallon, Manufacturing Expert and Solutions Consultant at For Industry. Welcome guys. So we're talking about the connected worker and connected worker platforms. I think they are terms that are well known, but I don't think everyone knows what they entail exactly. Mathieu, can you maybe give us a bit of an introduction? Sure, uh, it's pretty simple. Connected worker platform. So connected, that means that you've got communications uh, between people. So that's going to be at the factory level. Workers, as I said, at the factory level, uh, that's going to be mainly toward the operators, the workers, the frontline workers. And platform, because it's not one set, uh, sorry, one specific tool, it's a platform that have multiple, uh, let's say, possibilities. Yes, yeah, so how did this concept originate? Do you know when did this really start off? Is this a new thing or? I think it is a new thing. Actually, it's being, ex <coughs> what we see is that you know, we started this journey, connected worker, four years ago yeah. and at that point in time it, it it wasn't a concept which was clear and there are some there were some ideas about what it was and what the benefits should be could be i think that over the last year the concept of connected workers really accepted in the market mm -hmm. um, and, and 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 being adopted yes. and that's the change which we see so that the benefits which what I try to, let's say, explain, are now also embraced by the market. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it, it, it's we, we are getting there. We are getting there in acceptance of the importance of creating a connected worker platform. Yeah. And are manufacturers getting more interested in this, this thing, this technology? Yes, <clears throat> yes, they are, because they, they see and understand that they need to do something mm -hmm. for their operators. Yes. It's, it's kind of a neglected field, a lot of, over the last five till 10 years, uh, a lot of investments have been made in other technology uh, in order to run factories more efficient, more effective. But I think they forgot one key essential thing, mm -hmm. which is the operator. At the end of the day, somebody needs to do something, yeah. the guy with the head on, and how do you make his life more meaningful and that's what we are trying to do and, and connect them together. Yes. Yeah. And today there is many, many tools on the uh, factories that are trying to solve operator efficiency, just like Lawrence said. And also there is paper, uh, there is like many different things that will go along, I think, mm -hmm. uh, during this podcast. And the platform piece is missing. Like you can have 20 different tools that you use day to day, this is not sustainable. Yes. So it's kind of uh, like a supermarket. Instead of going to the green grocers, to the butchers, you have the supermarket in which you can buy everything. Yeah, yeah. And of <laughs> course, everything is linked it's kind together. Of nice <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was reading a while ago, and they kind of outlined these five main aspects of the connected worker platform. So um, I want to take you through those one by one, and. Um, kind of let you comment on the problem in the current situation and how a connected worker platform improves on that, changes that, makes everything easier. So the first one, um, their first aspect is standard work. Maybe uh, you can start by uh, mentioning some of the problems. Sure. Well, the issue with standard work is the standardization of the work. That means that you have to repeat same times uh, by different operators, different qualified operators, mm -hmm. uh, the same work. And to do that, uh, usually people rely on uh, OPL, one-point lessons. Uh, they rely on uh, text. They sometimes rely on images that they print out. And you can imagine that when you have a, a, a textbook, which is like 500 page long yes. uh, of each and every OPL work instructions, how to shut down, restart, uh, change over the equipment, mm -hmm. it gets very, very complicated to update. It gets very, very complicated to manage. And it's almost impossible to share that knowledge uh, across different plants. Yes, so accessibility seems like a big problem. I yes. mean, uh, if you need your work instruction on the shop floor, like what would an operator usually do? Walk up to... 
yeah, he, he, he or she has to walk uh, up to the control room, yes. or maybe if uh, he or she's lucky, there is the uh, like a, an, ex an extension, let's say, of the documentation in the control room is going to be nearby the equipment, mm -hmm. but that means that if you want to update uh, those OPLs and work instructions, then you have to update two places or even more than that. Mm. It, yeah, as you can imagine, that can be very time consuming. And is this also a bit related to continuous improvement? Yeah, <coughs> no, no, yeah it certainly is. Like, like, what you see is that specifically for those customers, and that's typically where we talk with, right? With multiple locations, you, you want to standardize processes. Mm -hmm. yeah, typically, you, produce, you have the same kind of machines, same kind of work which needs to be done. So you first need to standardize that yeah, in order to make it more repeatable, hence more efficient and more effective. And um, uh, and what was your question, sorry? Uh, how it relates to uh, continuous improvements. Yeah, so <coughs> at the end of the day, what, what, what companies are trying to achieve is, re is really enable digital continuous improvement, right? So, so, but that starts with the operator, meaning you want to enable him to, to, to get the knowledge which is in his mind on the shop floor and, and bring th that together. Yes. That's what we are trying to do. So typically operators are for nearly 25 years operating that certain line or within that certain factory. And now we are enabling him to not only bring that no make that knowledge digital, but apply it on the floor itself. It's what you call Kaizen, right? So you, you try to, to, to bring that together and that basically you are saying to the operator, hey, but we take you seriously. Yes. We take you seriously. You, work, you do are doing this for 25 years. Yeah. It probably is okay because otherwise no, nothing would have come out as a product out of this factory. Mm -hmm. So let's enable you to digitize your knowledge and then enable you <coughs> to do this continuous improvement as soon as something goes, not as you would thought it would go. If something breaks down, here are the tools or the mm. platform in order to start continuous improvements. Okay. So, um, yeah, we've to just touched upon a few things. What can a connected worker platform, what, what, what does it do with standard work? How does it improve it, make it easier? Well, because it's a platform, you've got uh, many sets of different tools and they are connected together. Mm -hmm. So that means that when you are using one module, which is about OPL, for example, uh, then you, ha you, you need to have somehow the, the uh, let's say, uh, features uh, in order to provide feedback mm -hmm. and easily. So you are, like, imagine just in a normal software, you, you see something going wrong, up, you press the, the, the feedback button, and then you, ca you can do the feedback and this feedback will be linked to the OPL. And also actions can be taken upon yes. that feedback. That's really important because what we see at factory is that sometimes you've got like uh, ID software or ID boxes, people put their uh, IDs in it, but it takes a very, very long lead time between the ID is uh, made by the worker up until uh, it's getting actually implemented. So yes. people get frustrated and nothing happens at the end because I say, well, I'm not listening, so why should I care about doing feedback? Well, here you know who, sh who made the feedback, so uh, the people responsible of the, the OPL, if we take back this example, uh, then can say, okay, I'm going to implement your feedback right away yeah. because I'm able to, because it's a digital platform. Yeah, right, maybe a thing we didn't emphasize enough is that um, Operators can access this connected worker platform on their mobile phones. So yeah, it's know, really important. Yeah. So I know for industry, for example, has this feedback button and they can give feedback on any knowledge yeah. document. Yeah. And it is actually linked to a lot of information, right? Yeah, exactly. The idea is that you view something and as Laurent said, I, I'm an operator, I'm using something. I see that something is not what I expected. Mm -hmm. Then you feedback, feedback it. Feedback it. And then normally, if the process is implemented uh, and other people listen to the feedback, then some, something will happen. Right. So we've got two, two things here, really. The one thing is they always have the right knowledge documents on their phone. And the second thing is they can continually improve upon them by giving easy feedback. Yeah, correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, well, it, <coughs> if I may add, 
that also and that then is leading to more to a more standardized way of working yes because if you have this this continuous feedback uh, continuous improvement uh, process in place for one location you can then share that yes over multiple locations while at the same time make sure you have one process one way of working yeah and that will lead to more efficient and productive ways of working so you can kind of change local feedback into global global yeah, best that's, practices that's exactly what it is right because yes. at the end of the day if you produce beer or you produce butter or whatever right at the end of the day there's a machine there are ingredients coming in and there are packages coming out it's kind of the same process whether you produce it in the netherlands or in the us or in in india process is kind of the same specifically if you use the same machines mm -hmm. how do you make sure that knowledge is being shared by different operators for the same machines at different locations right that's standardize standardizing the way of working by digitizing that knowledge coming out of the mind of initially one operator and then sharing it to thousands of people okay I think we've uh, completed this aspect. Um, do you want to move on to quality and compliance, which is number two? I think you read up on this uh, last night, so uh, maybe you can uh, kick this one off. Yeah, but I give the word to uh, Mathieu. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to do that. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, quality and compliance, that's that maybe after safety, that's the number one, well, number two then topic. Mm. Uh, and it's very important because, well, if you've got a breakdown, then it's limited to your factories and everything's nice. If, if you've got a quality defect, now that's that's another story because if the st if the the if the product ships out of the factory's door, then you've got a real real problem on your hands because you need to do customer recalling and so on. And so that's why it's really important. And um, regarding this topic, that means that there is a lot of paper involved today, or complex applications or not friendly applications, and all those are usually. Uh, let's say, enforced by a company's policy to say, because it's such an important topic, mm -hmm. then you have to use this paper form that is 20 page long, you have to use this Excel sheet, you have to report to the global team whenever something is happening and so on and so on, depending on the severity. Yeah. So there is a very, very, let's say, strong need of automations because right now everything is manual, everything is like very time consuming and um, yeah, consume a lot of administration's time. Yeah, yeah, big filing cabinets full of uh, paperwork. Yeah, 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 I saw that. It's really amazing. You, uh, you've got rooms of just file of papers everywhere. And, and that's great for compliance purposes because at the end of the day, you have to show that, uh, hey, I, I need, for, for example, if you produce food, um, you've got the GMP certifications, uh, you have the FDA regulations connected to that as well. Yes. Um, you have to prove that whenever you've got a problem, you have a process to fix that and you document that. Yeah. So you have to prove that you've got your room full of, uh, full of documentations. And I assume stuff gets lost. And stuff gets lost. And I think more importantly, um, they are not used. I mean, somebody filled out that form, that 20 page form just for the compliance purposes and then put it back in the drawers. Right. And then when you want to see like on the global scale uh, what's happening, then you, you just can't. Maybe you're going to have an Excel somewhere uh, that is shared and that manually filled out and sent to the central and those, those kind of things. But it's really difficult to understand what's going on. And so it's difficult to uh, improve as well. Right. And then uh, moving on to the Connected Worker platform, what does it do in this area? Well, basically, <coughs> it, it a lot, first and foremost, I believe, it... Uh, it creates a standardized way of working for audits and for, and for compliance yes. and and for quality. I believe, right? So it's it's very much connected to the first topic you were mm -hmm. you were trying to uh, you you were mentioning, but the use case specifically is then about this uh, about these two topics, right? So you you are making sure that the the quality uh, uh, everything which is needed to, this, this I don't know, 
help me out here. <laughs> there <Yeah>. is. <laughs> so yeah, every, everything that needs, uh, sorry, everything that is re registered. So imagine you've got a quality issue. Yeah. You've got a quality issue, you register it uh, in the CBWP, the Connected Worker Platforms, and depending on the category, the risk, the severity, you can decide whatever you want here, then there's going to be a workflow. And this workflow is going to be uh, enforced, just like today when I explained uh, with the 20 paper, <laughs> the tw that, that exists, <laughs> don't laugh at me, that really exists, those 20 sheets form, uh, 20 page for one form, it's amazing. Um, and, and you are going to digital that, and you are going to make an automated workflow out of that. Right. So that means that the operators is first able to uh, register the issue right now with his, with his application yes. uh, on the mobile. So straight on the shop floor. Straight on the shop floor. He or she take a picture, say, hey, there is definitely something wrong there. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's going to start a workflow. It's going to start automation. It's going to notify people. It's going to make sure that uh, I don't know, for example, the plant manager react within the 24 hours, you can define those things in a digital platform. Right. And uh, on my little cheat sheet, I have a little bit about uh, IoT data. How does that relate yeah. to this? Uh, well, today on the shop floor, you've got many different systems. You've got, uh, let's say, the legacy systems, uh, the Scala, the, uh, the DCS, the PLCs, the MES. All of those, those systems which are really nearby, let's say, the product. And of course, the IoT now uh, that we see. All of these uh, measure some things. That means that all of those measures, uh, if something goes out, you need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if you've got um, a scanner that it's, I don't know, in the food industry, it's quite common to have a scanner that detects metal objects okay. uh, to make sure that you don't ship out uh, uh, products with metal parts inside. Mm -hmm. um, these scanners, if something happens, somebody needs to take action somehow. But if, if nobody is aware that the scanner is saying something, then nobody will take actions. Or you could have a very long lead time between the scanner detects some things uh, and, and somebody see that. So if you've got a connected worker platform integrated with that scanner yeah. or with any IoT devices, MES or whatever, then you can notify the right people at the right time saying like, hey, there is something going on there, act on it immediately. So it's, so it's making it actionable, right? Exactly, you've got the data yeah. and you transform that into actions. So is that a really common problem that uh, sensors aren't like properly connected to like a trigger, like a workflow? I think they are connected quite well. And so what we see is that uh, nearly all big or all customers of ours in, in, in the market, they are investing heavily in <coughs> in making IoT operational. Mm -hmm. So that's had a huge platforms, huge solutions, a lot of expertise from all the, let's say, big advisory firms who are trying to advise and trying to make IoT work. And I think that works. Yeah. Up until somebody needs, needs to, to do something. Do something. Yeah. That's what you see. Yes. So there's a lot of data in, in place at a certain moment, moment in time, coming from well, the, the PLC itself or from the IoT device or from the scanner, just like Mathieu just mentioned, right? And or a combination of that, that's all being, let's say, put into one generic IoT platform or data lake, then it's all that data is being analyzed, correlated, uh, and the anomalies coming out of that data, there it stops. Right. Then suddenly, hey, but we have something here, but who, and that's it. But, but somebody needs yeah. to do something at the end of the day. That's yeah. the operator. And then we are connected, and then somebody, he or she, knows what he needs to do based upon that anomaly coming out of the IoT. So this is kind of the last step in, uh, like, uh, I don't know how you'd call it, but turning IoT into reality or, or action yeah it's it, it's connecting the shop floor yes. and, and and connecting the shop floor with iot i think that that is important it's there it will only become more but it's about it's about okay how do we connect that that the ability of of running iot which is great but at the end of the day if you don't have let's say hey, they call it lights out right so if you if you have a factory with, it, with no operators it doesn't you don't need to have it i haven't seen them so, meaning we have an IoT and operators, how do we connect them? And, and the, the, the ability in order to make IoT 
the, the output of IoT is great, but you need to connect it. Okay. And that's the missing link at this point in time. All right, so let's move on to collaboration, third point. Um, I think we have different layers here. We have collaboration between colleagues, between teams, but also on like a global level. Could you elaborate on that? Sure. Well, if you start at the small uh, scope, so you've got indeed the collaboration at the team level, like during your shift, of course, you are going to exchange information between, I don't know, uh, the operator, the line manager. Uh, you are going also to interact with other teams, like the maintenance team, the quality teams. You are going to exchange information uh, between them, like if you've got a breakdown, you are going to alert the quality team to say, hey, we need to hold uh, the package, and you are going to say to the maintenance team, well, there is something wrong. But all of this usually is pretty manual. So it's relying on phone calls, it's relying to walking up to the door, say like, hey, there is something wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you think of the broader scope, so if you think of not the team, but for example, at the plant level, then you already start to have a collaboration problem yes. because people will be connected to the people that they see during their shifts, but between shifts, it could be disconnected. Of course, you've got uh, some uh, overlaps when you are transferring information from one shift to the next, mm -hmm. uh, but that's also time consuming because then you, in 10 minutes, you need to say to the next shift what happened, the biggest things and so on, or they have to rely on uh, the logbook of the shift, those kind of tools. Uh, so that means that in the plants, you're gonna have uh, already a lack of, let's say, global communications. And the let's say the big scope uh, when you speak about multiple factories and even worse let's say multiple factories in different time zones then you've got uh, an even bigger collaboration uh, problem as we as we said uh, there is several manufacturers sorry several uh, equipments that could be let's say um, yeah. the same shared between uh, the, within the same manufacturers that could be good if you can share information between that, between those different factories, but it's difficult. And does it, it happen? If, if I may add, it, 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 your question is, does it happen, right? Yeah, does, does, does that happen at all? Well, what do you think the impact of COVID has been over the last two years of cooperation? Right. It wasn't, because actually what you saw is that we were on the edge of shutting down factories completely at, as in, you want to prevent that from happening, and, and you want to minimize contact between people. That, because it was by government, it was the law, right, at that point in time. Problem is that if you have one shift with 10 people, minimizing the contact, so what do you do if you need to pass over or you need to end and, and, and shift over your everything which you've done and the activities which need to be done? It wasn't possible anymore because if one crew get, went out, the other one came in and they were not allowed to, to get together in order to do a proper handover of activities. So, so that was the problem and basically what we see is the need for digitization, I think even accelerated by COVID, yes. is even, it's exploding now. Yeah. Because now people see that you can't do without it. It, yeah. it makes sense, but it wasn't, it wasn't set up, I would say, well or good enough upfront. Right. So then let's talk about what, what a connected worker platform or digitization can do to facilitate better collaboration from a local to a global level? Well, if you've got so many different uh, people involved, so many different scopes, um, then you need to have a way to organize communications. So, of course, you're still going to have phones uh, in the factories in order to like reach to other teams and so on. Mm -hmm. But you need to find a way to, um, and you need to store in the connected worker platform the information of what is happening, who is doing what, uh, what has been done, what will be done, uh, everything related to one problem needs to be, let's say, connected to that mm. problem. So the idea is that you've, you can collaborate around that issues and everybody knows what has been done and what they should, uh, they, what they should do uh, in order to uh, well, solve the issues and to collaborate more efficiently. Right, and, and are there things like collaboration on the point of maybe troubleshooting or root cause analysis? Or yeah, indeed. Uh, in one of our customers, so Lawrence was speaking about uh, the COVID uh, situation. 
well, because of COVID, they, uh, their global maintenance team were, were not able to travel. Um, and it was a huge problem because, well, if the, main, if the global maintenance team cannot travel to fix immediate issues, then, well, there's going to be some factories uh, that we shut down because they don't know how to do that. So if you've got a digital platform, a digital connected worker platform that is allowing you to uh, share Again, what is happening, what has been done, what are the troubleshooting steps uh, that has been performed, and then show that to the uh, global maintenance team without having them uh, traveling, then already they know what's happening, they know what was going on, they know what, what has been done, and then they can suggest next actions. They can work together with the local team on analysis, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you can have, for example, tools uh, like Five Time Wise uh, that is digital, mm -hmm. and with those digital bolts, you can then uh, map out use the Five Y, uh, let's say, um, methodology in order together with the local team, the global team, maybe other plants uh, together find a solution, find a true root cause, and solve that issues. And you can see like which people took which step. Can you track everything? Yeah, exactly. That's that's the idea. Of course, we don't track. Every, everything, mm -hmm. but uh, because of what we call structured communications, then you can always attach, uh, like say, link things that you've done, the task that uh, you've completed to an issue, to something, to make sure that everything is connected to, uh, well, the right resource. Right. Um, maybe this is a bit, bit of a side path, but um could we somehow link this to uh, like machine learning, like uh, auto suggestions? Yeah, yeah definitely. That's uh, that's um, an important. That's a feature that is used to uh, let's solve say issues solve quicker. issues quicker. Exactly. That's right. the goal. And how do you do that? Is that you look uh, in the historical um, data. So in the historical data, you can view okay, this action, those actions, has been. Um, has been done in order to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. So once you've got uh, a big enough, let's say, backlog of issues that you've closed, then you can you can uh, use the machine learning algorithms in order to try to guess, okay, we've got these kind of issues, and this is the action that we've put in front of it. Yeah. So maybe we can connect uh, the issues that will arise to suggested actions. Maybe it won't, be, it won't be perfect, of course, but maybe it will try to save some time and at the end of the day, uh, try to solve the issue faster. Okay. So on the point of collaboration, any last words from either of you? No, I think per perhaps I'm repeating myself, but, but on collaboration, I would say that in order, what, what the fact that, that we brought together different layers within multiple factories as in and with different layers i mean operators engineers maintenance people plant directors over and across different regions within emea within us with within apac and just brought them together in all in order to solve issues simultaneously mm -hmm. and and loop that back to the shop floor it, it, it brought a massive change in thinking at our existing customers, M meaning that, that, that you see that, 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 that for the first time in quite a while, operators were taken seriously. Their knowledge was being feedback directly to engineers and to maintenance people. And it brought everybody together, mm -hmm. funny enough, because that's, that's the paradox if you think about it. It, it brought yes. people together where actually they were taken out of each other because of uh, uh, because of COVID, right? Yes. So we brought communities together in order to solve f f uh, uh, issues quicker. Yeah. It's amazing, right? It is. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> so if we move on to training, um, I know a big problem in the manufacturing world is kind of the baby boomer generation who have a knowledge who are going slowly into retirement. Um, and I think there's also some issues with like outdated classroom learning methods. Mathieu, what would you say are the problems right now on, in the area of training? Mm -hmm. Well, at, at the end of the day, um, 
it's pretty simple. As you said, you've got uh, the, uh, let's say the, um, I don't want to say old generations, mm -hmm. but uh, the senior workers. People are a little bit older than you are. <laughs> people that are a little bit older than you are. Yeah. That's a very good way to put it. <laughs> um, well, they've got all the knowledge of the plant. They yes. don't have to read the OPL, they don't have to read the work instructions, almost. That could also lead to some issue with the standard work, uh, but that's another, a separate topic. They've got a lot of knowledge in their heads. Yes. And the issue is that when they are gone from the factory floor, then people don't know what to do. Like, mm -hmm. it would run, and then maybe they're going to face a problem that they don't know about. And the newcomers, at the same time, as you said, there is a, let's say, a, a baby boom in the factories when, uh, the, as I said, they, all, the people older than me uh, <laughs> getting out and the people uh, younger than me uh, going in, mm. they don't know anything about the equipments, uh, they don't know anything about the process, uh, they are used to digital tools. And I think that's and key, there is, yes, they yeah. are expecting they the, basically what they are expecting is the same working environment as their home environment. Yes. Yeah. Meaning, I want to see a movie, so I go to Fireplay or I go to Disney or I go to Netflix or whatever, and I look at now. Oh shit! I forget chips. Let's call Katie. Here. I want one pack of chips, and I want it now. So yeah. it's instant delivery. That's what they expect, and then they walk into a factory, and they see. The last time they've seen, they've read a book. It's probably ten years ago. It's a joke, but 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 it's ten years ago, and they need to go through all these piles of paper in order to do their work. Let alone, there's nobody there to support them and inform them on how to do things. Because the last two years they weren't allowed to, because of COVID again, but it, it a huge impact. And what happened is that for the first nine months, people were being trained, a lot of money, time, and effort invested in these people. And then after nine months, you think, yeah, well, nothing's changing here because the same pile of paper are still here. Yes. Pff, end of go. And that's the worst thing which could ever happen because then the older generation is getting older and the younger generation, after you invested time, money and effort, is leaving again. So yeah. the average age is dramatically going up. And that's actually having an impact on continuity in five years from now. Mm -hmm. So the paper-based way of working is also making it unattractive for like a new generation. It is. It, it, it's one of the, uh, if you ask really C-level people or plant directors, this is one of their main concerns. Yeah. How mm -hmm. do I make sure I get the right inflow of young people and, 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 ma and make them effect effective as soon as possible and making sure they will stay? I think that's a key thing here. Mm -hmm. So are there any solutions to that problem uh, with a connected worker platform? Yeah, I think there is, uh, because in a connected worker platform, you're going to have the knowledge uh, digitalized within the platforms. Mm -hmm. And when I say digitalized, that means that could be text and images, just like today's paper, but in a nicer form. But that could also be videos, just like uh, Lawrence mentions, that could be images, that could be dynamics, uh, let's say 3D models, the sky's the limit here. Yeah. Uh, because at the end of the day, you are going to use a mobile, you're going to use, use a tablet, maybe a desktop. So. You can do whatever you want. You are not limited uh, to uh, the paper, the paper, the fixed, uh, let's say, to the uh, paper. Yes. So and I, and I, th I think at the same time, Mathieu, is that, um, th th so uh, we, the, the, these connected work platforms give the ability to operators, new people and old people, to get the knowledge at, at when they want it and yeah. when, when they need it. When they yeah. need it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, eh, if you go one step up, as in super supervisors or plant managers, they need to have a proper understanding of which skills and which certifications um, people need to have in order to do their jobs, right? So it's, it's that combination. So you need to provide them the ability to have the proper knowledge at the right time. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time, you need to have an overview of what they need to do in order to get it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's that combination. Okay. So, what about training? Uh, connected worker platform help with training at all? Yeah. Um, what we see is that, uh, again, as Ron said, you, you, don't, you just don't want to do a six months training. That, that just doesn't work. Like, you've got thousands of studies that say that in a classroom training, somebody sitting on and listening, it will, he or she will get only like 10, 20% of the information. Yeah, they'll fall asleep. And uh, they fall asleep, and the rest is. Uh, the rest is uh, 
it's just forgotten. Mm -hmm. So what what we see is that training time needs to dra dramatically, let's say, reduce to how to use the connected worker platform, what are the basic safety rules, and maybe that's it. Yes. And the other stuff is going to happen on the fly. That means that I got a problem as an operator, I know how to use the connected worker platform so I can log the problem, and then using the abilities we previously PVG disk, because then you can access the knowledge, you can access the article, you can access the videos. So you can, at the same time, do something mm -hmm. on the equipment, maybe ask for help, but also, and most important, importantly, you are learning something. Yeah, yeah. so, so learning it practically. Exactly, you are learning on the fly, you're, you can learn it uh, practically. And related and all to... All on one platform, eh? Yeah, if all I, on one it, platform, it, it of course. It sounds obvious, but it isn't. Because mm -hmm. typically, this, this, this new person on the floor itself and so he had one tool for his trainings one for his skills or probably he didn't so he had only an excel sheet where i need to do this or i need to do that and now suddenly you provide him the ability via his own app to see what when where how mm -hmm. and, and not only in regards to his work but also in regards to the trainings he needs mm -hmm. to do and or the certifications he needs to get or the work permits he needs to receive in order to do his work so suddenly his life is changing into his daily life experience yes. and that's seeming that's what we are really trying to do to, to make that a seamless yeah way of of, of, of of going from your work to your house experience and i can also imagine maybe that if, if you're training like a new operator in a classroom like you're gonna teach him everything that he needs to know to do his job um whether he's gonna use it in real life or not. And when you use the platform, you're gonna learn the stuff practically when you need it, yeah. and the stuff that you don't do, you don't have to yeah. learn. Yeah. And, and of course you can manage, uh, like, I mean, as a manager, you can say, well, you have, you need to have this basis set of competences. Yes. Uh, and then you can say uh, to the operators, uh, like, okay, you need to do this basic set of competences. Um, and then you just learn that uh, on your idle time. Like for example, when you are just waiting the equipment uh, mm -hmm. for a cleanup, then you can do a small sessions. Uh, uh, you can do a small learning, go uh, read a knowledge article. You don't have to wait for a big dance in order to learn some stuff. You can also use the same platform in order to, uh, well, learn what you have to learn without sitting in a classroom. Yeah. yeah, and make it a safer working place, right? I think that's one thing we need to add here as well. Because there are also a lot of safety-related uh, trainings people need to do. Yes, yeah, regularly, yeah. Regularly, yeah. And you need to have an overview of who will do what safety-related training uh, when. Because if you don't do it, at the end of the day, hey, one key guy, you don't want people to get hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it needs to be a safe place to work. And I think it's that that's one I think crucial part, yeah. which is part of that training as well. Yeah. So instead of the classroom training, if you have the ability to do that kind of training, uh, like in the control room on your mobile phone, mm -hmm. just while you are waiting for something else, uh, from uh, as I said, like an equipment that is doing a changeover, whatever, right. then you are effectively using the time and, and you are making it more uh, efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Better than playing uh, Candy Crush. Yeah. Um, let's move on to our last aspect. Number five, continuous improvement. I think we kind of touched upon this when we talked about standard work. Is there anything we can add? Yeah, indeed. So you've got standard works and we spoke about, well, how to improve it. So how to collect IDs, but how do you turn, how do you turn IDs into results? That, that's really the one billion dollar questions here. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can have a lot of continuous improvement IDs. Hopefully you can collect them, you can uh, manage them using a connected worker platform, but you also need to track, well, which one should I do first? Is it ID A or ID B? Which one is going to bring me the most value? Uh, what, what is the deadline? What indicator is going to impact? All of those things, uh, you have to be careful when, because time is limited within a factory, so you have to pick up an ID against uh, another. So there is really this issues, uh, this problem around uh, the ability to select the right ID and also the ability to track, okay, we had this ID, we implemented, what was the result? Did we improve the KPI? Did we not? How do you measure that? That's the issue. So how uh, does a connected worker platform help with 
measuring continuous improvements? Well, you can measure well a lot of things because it's a digital platform. You can measure, for example, uh, how much ID you created. Uh, and I mean you, um, or I mean the organization uh, by itself. You can view the different category. You can see where it's coming from. So you can have some, let's say, some hints where, let's say, where is the low hanging fruit uh, in terms of continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. And you can transform those IDs into projects, and those projects can be connected to different indicators in order to track, let's say, uh, the results. And of course, you can um, use dashboards uh, in order to view what happens not only in one plant, but b because it's a platform, it's a global platform mm -hmm. uh, for one for each uh, manufacturer. Um, they should be able to see what is happening, let's say, within the company. It's yeah, and, and, and typically what we see is, right, so there are departments of people who are responsible for setting up continuous improvement, right? So they have different methodologies for that in order to do that. At the end of the day, they know what kind of issues and or ideas are responsible for which issues. Mm -hmm. right? That's kind of the 80-20 the, the rule always applies there. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, so, okay, this 20% of issues, which are re related to this machine, mm -hmm. This is what we're trying to solve. And you can measure that in regards to lead time. Is it solved? Yes or no. Is it accepted by the operator? Yes or no. So there are all kinds of, of KPIs you can define. At the end of the day, it's about continuous improvement, right? So, so if you've done that, and that knowledge which is then available based on that initial issue and or combination of issue and ID will then be given to all other locations, all other operators. And that's what you can just measure it. You can measure it by, by closing, but you can also, and for sure, perhaps the most important part, measure it by reduction of MTTR. Okay. Right? Because your mean time to resolve needs to go down. And that's because of the fact that you enabled continuous improvements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe I can build a little bridge here to our uh, next topic because um, I wanted to touch um, upon the benefits of a uh, connected worker platform and MTTR is actually something I wrote down. Um, are there any other benefits we can mention? And do we have maybe any numbers on that? Well, um, I'm not sure I got an exact number, but here we are speaking, with CWP, we are speaking about a global software. And, and in the manufacturing shop floor, that's quite, let's say, unprecedented to have one software for many different factories. And that's unlock a huge number of benefits, both intangible and tangible. Tangible in the term of MTTR reduction, for example, right. as uh, Laurent said. But intangible, like um, ease of collaborations between uh, collaborators, um, better, let's say, work uh, work life for operators because they are using a mobile application yes. and and also something really intangible is that all the knowledge of one company would be in one platform yes and that's something invaluable because if the company doesn't know how to run his equipment five years from now uh, f when uh, the let's say the senior people will be gone uh, in retirement yeah then you don't have a company anymore you don't, know, you don't know how to produce. So there is really a really strong uh, intangible, let's say, aspect of, uh, and I would say, uh, intangible uh, positivity of the connected worker platform is that instead of just digitalizing, um, let's say, all the knowledge for one, pl uh, for one plant, it enables all locations to work together and to uh, digitalize that together. Yeah, and I think we also touched upon making the job more attractive for a younger generation. I think that's also a benefit. Can we say anything about OEE, MTTR? Like, we see examples where we uh, drove down MTTR from 26 days to four days. Okay. So that, 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 that is amazing. And, and I think in general, you see that a, a, an output or productivity gain of 1% within two years. We, we, that's something which we are driving really with this connected market platform. A 1% improvement 
is huge. It's really huge. It, 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 and it happens not overnight. It, it doesn't happen within three months. Yes. It's a process of somewhere between two and three years. Then when, when we see really kicking it in, as soon as you start to scale it up, standardize work and mm -hmm. digitize knowledge. Yeah, so if, if we look at implementation, like um, how quick can you get going? with this kind of technology? Well, th that depends upon the experience you have. Uh, the, the experience we have built up over the last four years allows us currently to not only say, and we, 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 we know we are best practice based upon the fact that we have more than 200 factories running on our connected platform, basically. And now we can say for, for global processes, we can implement this for in, in two or somewhere between two and four weeks time. So within two to four weeks time, we provide you an out of the box, best practice, standard process where you can start working it immediately. And that's something which we learned over the last two to three years, right? So that, that's not pretty obvious. For other, let's say we are continuously improving and adding more software. And so that's something which takes more time that then typically it would take, I would say, between eight weeks and three months in order to implement these kind of processes, right? So th that's what we see uh, how long it would take in order to start up Connected Worker. Okay, so is it pretty quick? It is pretty quick and a lot, uh, mind you, a lot of manufacturing companies specifically on the floor itself are used to implementation time starting at six months mm -hmm. because it are complicated, it's complicated software, uh, multiple tools, so they start after six months. Yeah. And we basically say, hey, somewhere between three weeks and three months, we can do everything real time. Yeah. Okay. I think we just uh, went through everything I wanted to talk uh, to you about. Do you have anything to add? Maybe? No, 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 no I'm, I'm, I'm clear. I'm clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then I'm going to thank you so much for uh, being here with me today, taking your time. And thank you so much for watching or listening to us. We'll see you next time.